Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, brought to you by the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Every team in every league being talked about all the time, and this is growing and growing and growing. Go check it out, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. I'm going to get into each pick that I picked for the Seattle draft, and I think maybe Francis did too. I'll talk a little bit about it, and I want to keep it as short as I possibly can. It's going to be difficult, but here we go. Um, Anaheim, oh. Anaheim Ducks, I am taking Volkov. I, am, I was actually a little surprised he was on there, but he, they picked him up from Tampa, Tampa Bay last year, and he played like about 15 to 20 games, something like that, put up about nine points. I really like the guy. He's, I like his attitude. I like the way he grinds in the corners. Um, he's got a full court game and uh, can put up some decent points. Uh, with everybody else that's available here, here he is, Alexander Volkov. I think he's probably the best pick. I'm, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Next, we go Arizona. I'm taking Lyabushkin. Uh, I was going to go with Michael Bunting until I realized he was an unrestricted free agent. Watch out. I'd be signing him right away before the uh, free agent opens and Seattle has that opportunity for a couple days. I think he'd be happy to get a one-way from just about anybody. Let's give him a one-way contract. I just love the guy. For the same reasons of Volkov, grinding, hardworking. If you want to build a team, uh, building a team and you want to build a team that has intensity, and um, gives everything they got all the time. Having a person like Bunty in there helps that out a lot. Tyler Pitlick would do that as well. However, I'm going to go with Ilya Lyabushkin. Um, he, he's he's going on about a million, million and a half year contracts for the last three, four years now. So he can play in your 5'6", but he's a good depth guy. And for everything that Arizona has to offer here, probably the best, uh, I would say he's probably the best pick out of the bunch. Um, you might want to think about Yosef Kornar, but I have a feeling you could pick him up after the draft anyways. That's a goaltender that played in San Jose last year and didn't do too bad, and he's relatively young. Uh, Boston Bruins, I'm going with Jeremy Laz uh, Lazan. Uh, played top four minutes last year, can play right defense or left defense, and out of everybody who's available, I think he's far and away the better, the best pick. Um, Buffalo Sabres, I am going to go. I think the only one available really is Colin Miller. Um, is a guy that he can play on the right side for D, D and that's hard to find, uh, especially in an expansion draft. So you might be able to flip him, but he did play for Vegas, and he has he have an opportunity to have a uh, – player that's been part of expansion and can build up a lot of guys' confidence and feeling of wanting to be there based on the fact that, you know, Vegas did very well and he was there the first year. Uh, Calgary Flames, they're letting their captain, Mark Giordano, go. Now, I said that I'm not really looking to take big contracts. It's only one year. I, I don't really feel like Giordano is going to help out my organization all that much in the long term. He's 37 years old. And yes, you do need some uh, some aging players or some veterans to help your young players and stuff. And maybe he consider he just says he wants to stay in Seattle. But I'm more than likely going to take him. I think he's making $6 million. Retain $2 million of his salary, and I bet you can find a pretty good a uh, bunch of teams out there that would be happy to have Giordano still. He's got a lot of legs left on the 37 year on his 37 year old body. Um, give him an opportunity to win a cup somewhere and probably get a draft pick for him. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Oddly enough, and I don't know what the heck. Um, Niederreiter has done to uh, just get. Sent away by every team that he's that he's uh, ever been on. Um, when Minnesota had him, Fenton, the 
general short time general manager at the time traded him for an injured Rask and not much else. Uh, basically, just handing him over, meaning that there wasn't many teams that wanted him. Like there must be something with this guy that we don't hear about as fans, because now Carolina is giving him away for free. I mean, there's too many red flags here. He put up some good numbers last year, but as a Seattle team that really the most important thing right now is building a culture in the room. I think I might steer clear of Niederreiter here and go with uh, uh, Jake Bean. Jake Bean was a first-round pet draft pick in 2017, I believe. Not Yeah, first-round pick. Actually, fairly high, somewhere around 10 or 11. And uh, he's been buried in the depth chart of Carolina's D for quite a while. And as it turns out, they're going to let him go. They, I thought maybe Brady Shea was going to be here, but they're going to let Jake Bean go, and I think I'd give him a shot. He's young. He still has upside. You can just take a look at what maybe Carolina wasn't seeing in his game or was and work with it, since Seattle's got lots of time to do that anyways because I really don't think they're worrying about making the playoffs next year. I wouldn't be anyways. I'd be looking for as many players as I can to get for picks and stuff like that. Um, Chicago Blackhawks. The first thing I would do is call around the league and see if anybody wants Nikita Zadorov. But I'm I'm thinking that people are not going to want Nikita Zadorov. If I can pick him and trade him off for like a third round pick or something like that to somebody, I might just take him. But as it stands, I got to have a player for now. So. I'll take Adam Godet. In fact, I think it's possible with Chicago that they really would like me to take Zadaroff, and I could be like, I'll tell you what, you give me Adam Godet and I'll take Zadaroff. Uh, and I think they'd probably go with that. I like Adam Godet. I think um, he's he needs some set heavy work on his defensive game. He's about 24 years old, but he's got a killer shot. He can find the slot. Um I think he could be a late bloomer. So I try to do that. And like I said, get rid of some cap space for Chicago and take Zadaroff and give me go dead on top of it. Um, Colorado. Uh, uh, it's, it's a tough one here between Don Scoy and JD Comper, JT Comper. Um, but as it turns out, as I, I thought about it and I thought about it, because Donskoy, you do need shooters. But again, like I said, Seattle's not looking to win now. They're looking to find some players that can be part of the culture for a, for a long time. And uh, I think um, JT Comfer brings that more that to the table. He's younger. He's a center. He can play wing as well. He looks like he's projecting to be a third line center somewhere or, or winger. Dunskoy is better offensively and could probably help your power play and all of those sort of things, but he's making $4 million for the next three years. Um, not really, and he's 29 years old. So I'll take the younger player in JT Comfer. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. What did I have here? Kukan. Yeah, I got to take Kukan. It, it, it's the only real player here that's going to turn the needle at all. Um, Kukan has been a good, solid defensive defenseman for uh, Columbus. Five, plug him in your five, six spot, and he's not going to hurt you. And beside whatever they have, very little to offer. I am not taking Max Domi. Sorry, not taking him. The guy has been shunned from three organizations. Again, I'm trying to build a culture in the room in Seattle. I am staying away from guys that have been like Arizona he left he asked to leave Montreal they practically kicked him out they didn't want him they they ended up taking like a big risk on Anderson at five million who just came off a huge injury to uh get rid of him and Columbus was taking a big risk too the risk didn't work out I mean this guy just must tick everybody off I don't know but I don't want that in my room and I don't need to win tomorrow so if they want me to take him, again, staple a pick to him and we'll see what we can do with him. And I want Kukan anyways. Like if they desperately want to get rid of him, I'll, do, I'll get, staple a pick to him and 
give me Kukan and I'll get rid of him. That he's got negative value right now is what I'm trying to say. Um, Dallas Stars. Th- this was tough because most of, they did a really good job of not leaving very much to choose from here. Uh, a lot of their players are free agents. The one one way one thing I would there's two things I would consider. Jamie Alexiak is a free agent, but I consider selecting him to have his rights and to give him like an eight-year contract. He's still relatively young. He's a great defensive defenseman, and he's actually been building up his offense quite a bit. If he'd be willing to do that, if I'm able to talk to him to do it, which I would have to get the okay from Dallas, then I would. But I think that's highly unlikely. I doubt very much Dallas would allow me to do that. Ben Bishop was hurt last year. This is this would be very tough. It would depend on if you'd have to talk to doctors, see how healthy he's going to be. And again, I'd be doing this for the purpose of flipping him down the road. Let him play for a while, show that he's good enough, and you could get a pretty good package for him down the road. So that's a possibility as well. Uh, with all that not being the case, where is he now? I'm taking Taylor Fadoon. He's a 33-year-old guy who can move the puck all right. You can give him a minimum, you know, league minimum contract. And uh, I like him. I think he does has a lot to offer for his size. I think he plays fairly well. And he's a good veteran to have in the room. But I would try those first two options before I went that way. And it will be interesting to see what Ron Francis picks from that group. Um. The Wings, I'm taking Cholosky. Um, They don't really give you that much to offer. I know a lot of people are going to be pointing to a guy like Stetcher. Uh, again, he's just a veteran. I don't need him. And you're not going to get much out there on the open market for Stetcher. His value is maybe a middle pick. Um, I'd rather take my chances with a young Cholosky who has fallen out of favor with Detroit. Uh, try to get my people to work with them because he was a, a first round pick. Um, and I think skating is the issue. So just keep on working on his skating and see what he becomes. If he doesn't work out, he doesn't work out. But um, I think for the upside that's possible, Chalosky, it's the guy I would be selecting out of who they have, who they're offering here. Um, for the Edmonton Oilers, I'm taking Benson. Um, again, he put up a point a game last year in the AHL. He's still very young. Um, skating is an issue, but he's going to have every opportunity in Seattle to be able to, uh, become a regular forward. So out of everybody that they have here, there's not much that turns the like Slater Cuckoo, William Lagason, but I'm going to have enough defensemen as it is. So I'm going to take a forward here and go with Benson. Uh, Florida Panthers, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that Drager is going to be going to Florida, and I don't blame them. He's got a lot of upside. He could be. A, he showed great numbers last year, so you're probably not going to get an opportunity to get a young goaltender that's put up good, good numbers in the league already, so Drager will probably be the guy. Uh, for the Los Angeles Kings, I had Athanas Siu. Going to give him another chance. Um, he, uh, he's been all over the league. He's kind of butter. Like he seems to get hurt a lot. And when he was in Edmonton, I saw him. He, he would run out of breath a lot. However, in L.A., it looks like he got his cardio up. Um, he started getting healthy. And um, out of the players that they so they protected, it's the only one is Trevor Moore. They, they kept Trevor Moore over Athanasiu which tells me they took the character player over a guy who's got a lot of wheels. And character has been a little bit of an issue, apparently, with Athens this year. Um, however, I'll take the wheels. I'll give him a shot. Um, he's young. He still has upside. And uh, he put up some decent numbers in L.A. last year. Uh, Minnesota Wild. Oh, Kakinen, Capo Kakinen for sure. He's got, he's young. He's got a lot of upside. Uh, I'm going to take young goaltenders when I can get them. Hopefully they can build into my backup like Drager or Kakinen or go off and become a number one. And why not? Um, 
So uh, there, I, I thought about Carson Soucy here, though. That is a really good defenseman to have uh, on the board. I think you could get a pretty good pick for him if necessary as well. But I need some goaltenders, so I'm going to go with Kakinen. It was a tough pick. Uh, Montreal Canadiens. Okay, I think what's going to happen here is that um, Price is going to be selected by Seattle, and then they're going to retain a year or two of salary, like, say, $5 million, since they may need to hit the cap floor, and they'll probably get a first-round pick for that. So Montreal can add, like, a guy like Lion A or somebody. Who knows with Montreal? Um I think they'll go after some free agents for sure. And I thought, I wouldn't doubt if they offered up a first-round pick for it and, and you still got Brett Kulak possibly in the deal um, or somebody like that. But this will be an interesting one to see what Montreal does. Bergevin, as we know, thinks way outside of the box. I love him for it. Um, we'll see what happens there. But I think something like that. By the way, I got that from Gravite. Gravite is an awesome YouTuber, young YouTuber. I listened to his uh, picks as well, and he he thought of he thought of that, and I was like, that makes sense. So we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, Nashville Predators. Um, I, I I hear they're going to offer up a first round draft pick for Seattle to take Matt Duchesne. I really don't like taking Matt Duchesne, but if they're going to give me a middle first-round pick this year, I'll do it. $8 million a year for a long time, though. I'm really iffy about it. I'm still iffy about it because I don't want to have a whiner in the room. And Duchesne has been a bit of a whiner. Maybe, maybe I can convince him to do it for Ryan Johansson. I'd be much more at ease doing it for Ryan Johansson. Ryan Johansson isn't really a first line center anymore he's getting paid like one but if you want to get that cap space i don't know what they want to do with it but whatever if you want that cap space i'd rather do it for ryan johansson maybe a second instead but i'm really i don't know duchene might even take more than a first seriously uh, i'm not liking that bringing duchene in my room um if if none of that happens I would probably go with uh, Yakov Trenin, uh, Rocco Grimaldi. I really like Rocco Grimaldi, somebody like that, to play in your bottom six. But uh, I think something like that is almost certainly going to happen. Um, New Jersey Devils, they don't really have to do much here, um, and they don't didn't really offer all that much. But I, I like Nathan Bastian. Um, he plays hard, good, solid hitter. I'm not going to put up huge points. He'll probably be on your fourth line. But he'll probably play in the league on the fourth line for quite some time. He plays the fourth line role really well. And he's got some pretty good speed. So I'm going to take Nathan Bastion. Um, New York Islanders, they got an interesting group here that they've left open. Jordan Eberle and uh, Bailey. I'm probably going to take Eberle. I, I thought about this a long time. I I don't want to take Eberle without them giving me a pick. I feel really ticked about it, the fact that he's getting away with this because he, they don't have really much more to offer. I'm thinking about saying I'm going to take Del Cole and wait for the phone call because he put Eberle out there for a reason. He wants the cap space. I know Lamorella wants the cap space. So I, I, I'll probably play Coy and just go Michael Del Cole and wait for him to at least give me a fourth-round pick to take Eberle. In which case, this will be one of the players in my three retainment players that I'll retain money on. And for $3.5 million, see, New York Island, you say, well, New York Islands could do that. Yeah, but they don't want just, they don't want to be retaining any money. They're tight to the cap already. Seattle has the power to retain a million and a half on this contract for the next three years. And at $3 million, I think you'll have a lot of people interested in Everly and you can get a pretty good return. So you can get the fourth round pick and maybe two seconds out of the deal. Anyways, if they're willing to do something like that, I'll take Eberle. Maybe in the end, he outweights me and I take Eberle anyways, but we'll see. Uh, New York Rangers. Um, oh, Colin Blackwell was the only one they really left available that makes any sense to me. He just he's a, he's a winger that put up some surprise offense last year. I like his overall game. I like his attitude. 
Yeah, he's got a great personality in the room. So I'm going to take Colin Blackwell there. Ottawa Senators uh, didn't leave really much. We need a, a, def, a center. I think Chris Tierney is only 29 or 30 years old. Uh, he can play up and down the lineup. He's a pretty good passer. Um, he, he's, he's built up his third third line, fourth line play the last couple of years too. He plays a lot more physical than he ever has. So um, the other one that I may consider is Marcus Hogberg. Um, there's still so much upside in this guy, but he has struggled several times. When he looks hot, when he's hot, he's really hot. When he's not, he's really not. That's the problem. But I think I'm probably going to go with Tierney. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers, they're going to want me to take James Van Riemsdyk or uh, uh, Boracek. James Van Riemsdyk has got two years left at $7 million a year. I strongly consider the possibility of using him as a retainment uh, piece to trade to somebody. But I really think Gosh Spears got his game back together again, and I need a, another defenseman here. So I'm going to go towards Gosh Despair, and I'm doing it hoping that Philadelphia wants me to take Van Riemsdyk or uh, Voracek off their hands big, big time. They want that cap space big, big time because I think they want a scoring forward on, that, on the wing. And if they have one in mind and they need the cap space, Maybe I might be able to get Gosh to spear in a pick on top of it. So I'll wait it out, wait it out, wait it out, hum and haw, waiting for them to offer something like that. Um, Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, Tanov. You got to take Tanov here. I'm surprised he's available. They they, they took Carter. I, I wouldn't have been picking Carter if they wouldn't have protected Carter. I don't know why they put left Tanov available. But... He's only making $3 million a year. He's got value on the market. And if you want a guy that's going to bring that fight and uh, competitiveness to your room, which I think you really need as an as a, a, a expansion team to get, it's hard to find guys that are able to bring that to a room. I'm going to take Tanov in that spot. Uh, San Jose Sharks, same thing. Dylan Gambrell. I'm taking Gambrell over Ryan Donato. Ryan Donato is just... Doesn't can't figure it out, man. He just can't figure it out. His defense is absolutely terrible. He looks lost way too often. I know a lot of people would want to take him, but I'm going to take Dylan Gambrell and what he brings again, the competitive fire to a room. You need guys like that, and uh, I like him here. They don't have much more to offer. So, um, the San Jose Sharks. I think I got to go with Vince Dunn when it's all Vince Dunn when it's all said and done. But I'm really get my people working on what happened there in St. Louis with Vince Dunn. Um, he fell out of favor really hard, and I don't know why. And I'm a little scared about the pick. But with there, the other one that I had, I got too many forwards. I liked Zach Sanford too. But I think I'm going to roll the dice with Vince Dunn. He can play the right side, and getting right defensemen are difficult to do. And if you can turn that kid around and make him the offensive defenseman that he always was supposed to be, you got a nice pick there. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, this was – there's so many things that can happen here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is try to force them to uh, – because they, they've got Ross Colton here, 24-year-old – uh, power type forward that could put up some decent points. I think I'm going to play on Russ Colton. And I know you're like, you're going to let all of these other guys go like Palat, Kalorn, Gord. Yeah, I am. But I'm going to get Colton and one of those. I'm going to, that's, I'm going to basically say right up to the line, I'm taking Colton. If you want me to, if you want the cap space, you're going to have to uh, give me Colton anyways, or I'm just going to take Colton. <laughs> I'm going to gamble, man, uh, and then I may get Gord and Colton, or Johnson and Colton, or whatever. I'll, they, I'm pretty sure they're going to want to take me to take Johnson off their hands. I really like Russ Colton. If I take Johnson off their hands, they're going to have to give me more than Colton, because Johnson is the lower, uh, the lower player out of all the ones available. Uh, at a very high cap hit at $5 million. So um, I'm looking at 
cold. Now, the other one that's difficult not to take is uh, cow foot. That one's difficult not to take as well. Um, I could be looking at a cow foot, a young defenseman, but he's really slow of foot, and his foot feet haven't uh, built, really got any better. So somewhere around there, I'm hoping I can work out a deal to get Johnson, Colton, and a pick so they can do cap space. We'll see what happens. Tampa Bay just might say, take Colton, too bad. We'll trade what our guys after the – We'll trade our guys after the uh, expansion draft, but I still think they're going to have a difficult time getting much for a lot of these guys at five and a half million dollars. Uh, not really finished with that one. I might at the end of the day just take Gordon and get it over with. But Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, who did I have for Toronto? Oh, it's either Kalor. It's either uh, Kerfoot. Or McCann. They left both of them available. They picked up McCann in case they take Kerfoot. And from what I hear, they really love Kerfoot. I personally think I would take McCann in this deal. But I'm going to go with the fact that I've heard all over the place that uh, Seattle likes Kerfoot and they're going to take Kerfoot. So Kerfoot it is, I suppose. Um, Vancouver Canucks. I'm strongly trying to get them to give up a pick and I'll take Louis Erickson off their hands. Uh, but it's going to cost them a first. I don't know if they'd be willing to do that. Uh, if they really want cap space bad enough, I don't know. It, it comes down a lot of teams. What's more important, the cap space or the pick? Cap space or the pick? Both of them are very valuable right now. So I think there'll be a lot of infighting here about uh, who they are going to pick. But besides that, they're going to want to probably remove Holtby too. I'm going to say I'll take Holpe off your hands if you give me somebody like Zach Lind, uh, maybe a pick or something like that, and I'll get two players out of it. Cole Lind, I should say. Cole Lind um, hasn't really progressed all that fast, but he's still got upside. Um, that's what I'll try to do. I, I'm going to play on the cap space quite a bit to try to acquire as many assets as I possibly could. Uh, Washington Capitals. Uh, for sure, you got to take Dylan here. I'm surprised. I'm kind of surprised he's available, but they had to take Carl. They took Trevor Rams, Ran Reemsdyke over Dylan, which leaves me to believe that they want me to get take Dylan because of cap space again. So I'll, I'm going to leave it alone probably and just say I'll take Daniel Carr or somebody else until they give me a pick to take Dylan. I really think that they're good. They should, they're, they, they'll, they should lean more on this. Um, obviously Dylan wouldn't be available right now if they were able to trade him before. So how much more are they going to be able to trade him afterwards? It's possible they could because anybody that was trying to trade for Dylan beforehand would have uh, would be more likely to trade after because they would have to protect him in their expansion draft. However, if they thought they could trade him after, why don't keep him and put and put uh, Van Riemsdyk out there? I'm probably not taking Trevor Van Riemsdyk. Why? Why would I do that? Uh, you know, maybe maybe they would. Maybe they think that they would take Trevor Van Riemsdyk, and that's why they did it. Interesting. As it stands. If I can't get him to give me a pick, I probably at the end of the day, in the last second, take Dylan. I'll take Dylan as my defenseman. Uh, and uh, Winnipeg, they leave in Mason Appleton. I love the guy. High offense. I'm going to take Mason Appleton for sure. So quickly, that leaves me uh, Niederreiter. Or sorry, I didn't take Nita Ryder. Athanasiu, Johnson, Eberle, uh, Kerfa, Duchesne, Volkoff, Gabriel, Colton, Appleton, um, and a a place a, a, a probably a free agent with Comfort and Blackwell. I'll probably find a free agent that I can fit in with uh, Comfort and. Blackwell, possibly Benson as well. That's going to be a lot of competition for that left side. Um, as far as defensemen are concerned, Giordano, Kukan, Dylan Dunn, Gosh Despier, Lauzon, 
and uh, Chalosky with Lyabushkin and Kulak. Those are my picks. Those are what I have left on there. Tell me what you think about all that. Uh, that was a half an hour. Ooh. Anyways, that was good times. Catch you later. Tell me what you think and hit the subscribe and the bell. Okay, bye.